the listeners. This is Jack Russell. Hey, Jack, this is Dustin. Uh, thanks a lot for calling in today. It's great to be speaking with you. Oh, thank you, man. My pleasure. Well, I won't keep you too long, but uh, let's talk a no. bit about uh, the new album you got coming out. He saw it coming from uh, Jack Russell's Great White. Uh, what are what are the listeners in for with this one? The record itself is uh, totally different. I mean, it's absolutely the best record I've ever done, and everybody says that, of course. You know, it's great since sliced bread. But this one has a vitality and a depth to it and, and an eclectic value that is something we've never done. I mean, we really experimented. We pushed the envelope on this one. And every song has its own character, its own um, idea. Um, lyrically, it's very uh, up-to-date, um, talks about current issues. You know, it, it's just a very, very diverse, eclectic record, and there's something on it for everybody. I mean, there's even an a cappella song on it. I mean, you can imagine that. It's like, it, and it's huge. It's a great song. It's just everything was done with voices. I mean, everybody in the band sings. So we, they arranged, we arranged it, and it was just, I can't even describe it. It's so cool. I laugh I think when my guitar player came with the idea. I said, you kidding me, acapella song? Come on. You know, and it turned out to be beautiful. I mean, you know, the record is, is a great album. I, I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it that's, that's listened to it and bought it. Of course, you have a, I've had a couple of negative reviews, but obviously there are people that either didn't listen to the record or just don't like me or Great White, period just left the station here in Salt Lake and they were just, you know, they played a few tracks off and they're just like, oh my God, dude. You know, so it's very, I'm very, uh, very calm. I'm, I'm feeling very good about it, you know. Yeah, the new one does have, uh, it's got that classic great white feel, but as you mentioned, uh, definitely more eclectic. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good album all around. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think people, you know, are, at least the people that, I, that I've heard it, like the hardcore fans, you know, you never know what they're going to say, but they'll always be honest with me, you know? And um, they're just going, oh, my God, Jack, this is really what you said it was. You know, I mean, I I remember this one reviewer, it was funny, he goes, I never liked Great White. You know, he goes, I always liked Jack's voice, I never liked Great White, but this album, he goes, man, you know? So, I mean, I'm really proud of it, and, uh, you know, people are responding well to it, and all we can do is just do the best we can do to try to help turn the face of music and radio back around the way it should be. I mean, I like I, my, I like the days when the DJs had their own shows, you know? <laughs> they play what they wanted to play, and you listen to a DJ because you like what he played. Yeah, for sure. Well, I got to ask you, Jack, um, who's playing with you on this new album? Is it uh, the guys that were in your solo band or the... Oh, no, it's not, I, don't, I didn't have a solo band. This is a... Uh, I mean, that's Mark Kendall's words. It's Jack's solo band. We split the name... And I, I let them have Great White. That was a gift. Because legally, it was mine. You know what I mean? But I figured, you know, I don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and risk my whole life at a jury trial. You know, these guys paid me out to be the devil, you know, because I had a drug problem like they didn't, you know. But um, so I said, okay, well, I'll be Jack Russell's Great White. You be Great White. And Mark's on the radio saying, oh, yes, yeah, Jack's solo band. And it's like, no, it's not. This is a hand-picked group of people, you know, that have... Uh, you know, Rob, he was played with uh, Rob Halford, my guitarist, and the drummer played with Bruce Dickinson, my bass player played with Montrose. You know, uh, Tony Montana was in Great White during his heyday. He was the bass player. You know, he's playing guitars and keyboards now. So it's so it's not just a bunch of hacks out there doing what I tell them to do, you know. It's a, it's, it's a band, a real band. So, you know, um, the same guys that I've been playing with are the same guys on the record. And, you know, that's why it took me so long to put a record out. Because I wanted to make sure that, you know, I had the band that I wanted before I started committing anything to, to, to uh, tape, as you would say, you know. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, I guess the songwriting process for you these days, uh, has it changed much since uh, back in the day? Or do you got to maybe just have kind of a formula that you're sticking with? Because I know this one's, uh, as you mentioned, a bit more eclectic than uh, some of your old stuff. No, there's, there's no formula. Um, it's just... Robbie and I get together for the most part, you know what I mean, we're the, we're the main writers, and, you know, I'll give him an idea, like, musically, and, or, or I have a whole song in my head, music and lyrics and melodies, and I'll say, since I don't play, I gotta go, okay, go, dun, 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 or whatever, you know what I mean? And he's gotta translate that into, uh, into chord changes, and then, you know, he'll, he'll you know, enhance it and make it better, and... Or he'll come up with an idea, and I'll write the melodies and lyrics. Or he'll come up with an idea, and you know he'll come up with the melody and partial lyrics. I mean, we share everything. I mean, it's it's not just 
you know, the guitar player writes the guitar and the singer writes the vocals and the melody lines and that's it. We're very, uh, it's more of a collaborative thing than I've ever had before. So it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know? Yeah, that is awesome. And I know, uh, some of the listeners out there might not realize, but, uh, you know, Great White and, and you uh, kind of, you can trace it back all the way to the late 70s. I mean, 40 years later, yeah. your, your voice uh, is still as powerful as ever. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I try to take real good care of it, you know. I mean, uh, I have a certain uh, uh, regimen that I do every day, warm my voice up, and I've been doing that for the last, since well, since 1982, you know, and it, t- it takes a long time, you know, to warm up every day. But it's worth it, you know, and i got to warm down afterwards. So, but it keeps the voice working in tip-top shape, you know. But it's it, you know it's worth the energy I put into it, you know. Yeah, it's great that uh, you still you know not all singers that have that kind of style can uh, can maintain the the voice for that long. So it's great that it's still working out. Uh, are you kidding me? I know, I'm so I'm so blessed. I'm so thankful to God. It's like you know every day I'm like ah, okay, thank you, still there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's uh it, it's it's nothing short of miraculous, and and you know I I I, I respect it as the gift that is as it is. You know what I mean the gift that it is. You know, I never take it for granted, and I never feel entitled. You know. Well, as we mentioned, uh, the new album he saw it coming is out now, and. Uh... I mean, you've been selling uh, millions of albums for a long time. I know you guys really exploded onto the scene back with, uh, you know, Once Bitten and uh, the Twice Shy album. Rock and, Me and, and Rock yeah, and those, you know, so, yeah. That was such a, a crazy time, uh, just like, as far as the height of excess goes for metal yeah. music. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, I assume there's a question coming my way. <laughs> well, just, uh, you know, some of your memories of that time, and I mean, just metal music in general really was all over the charts uh, back uh, back in those days. Yeah, well, you know, the, the the memories I should have the most of, you would think, you know, all these huge places that you played and, and they would really stand out. There's only a number of gigs that I really remember. You know, I mean, everything else is kind of a blur because it's like, going to the office every day, you know, do you really remember every single day at the office or what you did or who you talked to or, you know what I mean? It is, it's a, but there are some that are really special and I stand, they stand out and I remember. But the most thing I remember about the 80s was just, it was nonstop. Just, you know, we'd go and go and go and go and go and come home and the minute I got home, you know, I just stay sober on the road. I and mean, I used to just, I just quit smoking, quit drinking, every, anything that messed my voice up, I stopped doing but the minute that last show was over, the thank you good night as I'm walking off stage, my road crew got to be there with a lit cigarette, a bottle of Jim Beam, and then be an ounce of some other stuff in the dressing room, you know? <laughs> and the party was on until the next album or the next time we had to decide to sing. So it was just nonstop, go, 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 hedonism. It was great, you know I mean? It, it, it's been an amazing, amazing life. My life has been the adventure I've always dreamed it would be tenfold. Um, sure, I made a lot of mistakes, and I did a lot of stupid things, you know, all all around drugs, you know, if I, if, you know, that was my, alcohol and drugs are, are the worst things in the world. Anybody out there that's got a problem with alcohol or alcohol or drugs, get some help. You may not be as lucky as me. You know, I've been in, uh, last time I drank was almost two years ago. I came out of a five-day coma, and I'm in this hospital room. There's all these people in my room, a guy from Chicago that I know, and my wife, like my band, my doctor, and you know, the doctor's like, uh, you know, I go, where am I? Where am I? He goes, well, you're in a hospital. Yeah, I know I'm in a hospital. I meant, well, what, what am I here for? My wife said, well, Jack, you, I couldn't wake you up. You came home that night. Uh, you were out with Don talking, of all people, and uh, I came back home, and uh, she got me on the bed, and, and she couldn't wake me up the next morning, so she drove me to the emergency room, and uh, I was in a coma with my liver almost shut down. And, um, you know, so... The guy told me, look, he goes, I'll tell you like this. He goes, the way you drink, what your wife tells me how you drink, and I don't think you're going to change if you do. I said, no, I wouldn't. And he goes, well, if you do that one more time, you're going to be dead. He goes, I'm not saying you might, could, should, would, you know, you're going to die. So I said, well, that's pretty much it then, you know. <laughs> and it's like somebody putting five, six bullets in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a gun saying, let's play Russian roulette, you know. So... And that that message is just for, there's a song on the album called My Addiction, which has to do with all that. But uh, the message I was trying to impart um, is just, you know, if you do have an issue and you're listening to this interview, please get help, because it's not worth it, and your life could be so much better, you know. 
Yeah, it's great that you're uh, in a good place now and everything's solid. And again, uh, the new album, He Saw It Coming's out now. Are, are you guys uh, on tour or maybe planning something? Yeah, there, we're on tour right now. We're actually, actually, right now I'm in. Uh, I'm sitting in Salt Lake City. We got a show tonight. Um, we're just doing weekend stuff right now, but there are actual tours where we might get back on a bus, you know, for the first time in a while and take it on the road for a while. And then I know we got plans to go to Europe. Um, but, you know, the States is our home, and, and this is more important than anything, you know, the U.S. And, and I know we're coming out your way soon. You know, it's, it's, this, is our, this is where we love to play, man. This is where rock and roll, it, it's, it, this is the, the, the heart of rock and roll. You know, the, the Midwest, the, 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 you know, the East, nudging the East, you know, Minnesota, that area. You know, Chicago, it's always been a mecca for, you know, 80s music, if you want to call it that, whatever. You know, so we, uh, yeah, we love playing around this area. I mean, we will always be back. And you guys are in what, Man- Mankato? Is that right? Yep, in Mankato. Yeah, it's a cool little town. I like it. You guys have grown, though, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, I would say, at least doubled in the last uh, 20 years. God, it's amazing. See, I'm I'm moving out of California. I just made up my mind. I'm, so I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting there paying all this money. I'm going, why? I, I make the same money no matter where I go. So why am I living here? And they're just sucking the life out of me. You know, it's like ridiculous. I mean... The gasoline, I live, I, I could see the boats from my boat. I could see the, the, the tankers come in, offload the crude, and then there's a refinery down the street, you know, and not down the street, but like, you know, miles away, I mean, you know, 10 miles away, 5 miles away, and I'm paying like more money for gasoline than a guy that it must take 20 gallons to get to get 10 gallons to him, you know? <laughs> and uh, I'm just like, I don't know why. California's ridiculous. And so I got to get out of there. I mean, my wife's on disability. She was a nurse, and you know, it's just the cost of living is just stupid. It's not even worth it. You know, I mean, the, yeah, the weather's great. Yeah, I was born there, but you know what? I can get over the weather. I can, I can turn the heater on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, maybe if you uh, swing this way on tour, you can just uh, stop and uh, just live here. I guess. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I would love. To, no, I'm, I'm actually when I, as I'm out, I'm looking around. I'm taking videos and I'm doing things like that because you know I'm I'm going to move and I want to be within a year. And Minnesota is definitely on one of the target areas you know because i've always loved it there man land in ten thousand lakes i'm i'm mr water i live on a boat in in, in, in king harbor in redondo beach so i love water you know awesome again jack uh, i'm looking forward to seeing you around here on the new album uh, he saw it coming's out now it's been great speaking with you thanks so much for your time thank you my pleasure man i appreciate thank you for your time you know and 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 uh you know keep the rock alive brother all right i'll do my best thanks a lot man all right man you got it all right